Hello, all of you gardeners. We are ready to talk gardening and it's Mid-American Gardener. So thank you for joining us. We're gonna have a fun time talking about all kinds of plants and other related things to the garden. I'm Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture during the school year at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department in the College of Aces. But there are three really, really talented folks with me. Let's find out who they are. They're gonna give you a little bit of what their expertise is, so try to gear your questions towards that if you would, please. Well, let's hand it over first to Chuck Voigt. Hi there, Chuck. Hi, Diane. What you got going on over there? I am Chuck Voigt, and I'm a vegetable and herb specialist, also in horticulture in the crop sciences department at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And I was out in the vegetable patch this morning, Ooh. and I brought lots of fun things. Ah. Um, Last year I had green cauliflower and, 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 and cheddar cauliflower, mm -hmm. which is, is kind of an orangey yellow and white. And this year I, I wanted to have a graffiti, which is a, is a, is a, is a hybrid purple variety. Beautiful. That seed wasn't available, so they sent me an heirloom. This is, this is purple of Sicily. So it's a Sicilian mm. purple and, and just a, a gorgeous color. And it holds up a little bit uh, through, through cooking. Uh, you know, not like purple green beans that, that turn green. And then uh, eggplants. My goodness, eggplants have just gone crazy in the last few years. Uh, you know, what we used to think was an eggplant was something that looked like that, only, you know, four or five times that big. Um, but now we've got uh, all these elongated Asian types. This is one called Hansel. We have Gretel. And we have fairy tale. We kind of call that the fairy tale series. Uh, this is this little one. This is a full sized one is called pot black. And this is one that we're trialing this year for for the all America selections. But uh, literally 20 or 30 uh, fruits on each each of these. They're just they're just so productive. And uh, no insect problems. Uh, flea beetles when they're when they're little, you really need to do something to keep flea beetles off of them when they're transplants because it's pretty easy for the, them to destroy the leaves. Yeah. But once they get through that stage, okay. uh, they hold up pretty well. Occasionally, Colorado potato beetle might uh, mm -hmm. might switch over and, and have this because it's in the same uh, plant family. But uh, beautiful cauliflower and and uh, eggplant, and I've got my seedlings started for my fall crop of, of of cauliflower, which is always even better than spring. But it's been cool enough this summer that it's it's it held has. up. Last yeah. summer, uh, not so much. Right, but the purples are gorgeous. Those make a nice combination. Well, and and I didn't have any, but, but next to the cheddar, that the uh, the contrasting colors of the purple and that kind of orangey yellow is is fantastic. Ooh, maybe people will stop putting in flowers. Go yeah. right to Colorado, Colorado, well. cauliflower. <laughs> Colorado has the same colors though. The yeah purples and greens. Well, thank you, Chuck, very much. That is great. We need oh, yeah. more to see more things from the vegetable garden, and so we appreciate you bringing those. Okay. And you'll have a few more yes, coming I up will. later. Well, then, thank you, and we're going to go next to Marty Alanya. Hi, Marty. Hello. My name is Marty Alanya. I'm a private landscaper, and I have a little email here that leads right into my show and tell. Squirrel deterrent. Someone wrote in and said they had watched the show and someone had asked a question about how to keep squirrels from digging in your potted plants, and she said she solved this problem with fist size or larger rocks on the soil surface of your container plant because they're too big for the squirrels to remove. Now, that leads us to my show and tell. A friend of mine asked me to come around to her backyard and see what her hen and chicks were doing. These are hen and chicks. And you're probably familiar with these little rosettes. Probably your grandma had them, and I've seen them for years and years. And it turns out they were doing this. And I said, land sakes, I'm not sure. <laughs> Looks like they're going to bloom. And I did a little research. These are um, in the, they're a succulent. They're in the Crassula family. Their genus is Sempervivum, Latin for live forever. And they seem to do that because the parent plant, the hen, sends out lots of little shoots called the chicks, and then even when the hen dies, the chicks survive, and the hen dies after it blooms. Buh -huh. But <laughs> it only does that, you know, for every three or four years. And I, I had never seen this do this before, so groovy, eh? These are very <laughs> popular now in our Zarek. People really like uh, 
you know, drought tolerant plants. Well, this is a drought tolerant plant. It, it originated in Europe, Asia, in the mountains. So it has incredible cold tolerance. Snow is even better. It is completely happy doing whatever you do. So you don't even have to water it. And it'll do this, this little prehistoric tree thing. I really like this. So I was very grateful to Nancy for letting me bring her along. Well, those are quite stunning. They're fantastic, say. aren't they? They really are. They're kind of... And, and they come in, in all colors. kinds of varieties. They uh, do. We went to a, a nursery in Indianapolis at Garden Writers, and they must have had 40 or 50 cultivars of hen and chicks and oh, yeah. you know, red ones and purple ones. and, and The all webby sorts of, ones. Oh, they're, yeah. There's yeah. some rainbow L varieties. Little ones, big ones. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was incredible. Several of those followed me home. Oh, I see. <laughs> There's also a, gen um, a genus that is Echeveria, not Sempervivum, but Echeveria. They look very similar, but they're much larger. They'll get up to be like a foot in diameter. But they have a similar lifestyle, although they don't die once they bloom. They can bloom and they survive it and they go on. But yes, you can, somebody, you can go crazy with these and take very a picture good. when they do this because they don't do it very <laughs> often. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for bringing those, and you're kind of the green in between the purples that we have here today, I so am. I'm going to, that is a segue into introducing <laughs> Shane Coultra. Hi, Shane. Hi, I'm Shane Coultra. I am one of the owners of Country Arbors Nursery and Culture Nurseries in Urbana, and I kind of deal with a little bit of everything from annuals to trees and shrubs all day. I kind of do the same thing we're doing here, but I do it for another eight or ten hours a day. <laughs> so I see, I know a little bit, I know a little bit about a lot of things so you can gear your questions and I'll give you a little answer for everything but today I brought some things in that you probably see more in the fall although we grow them all year and these are ornamental peppers you can eat them but you're not gonna want to eat them because there's really not much flavor but they're grown because they are ornamental they are pretty and I brought three of the varieties and there's probably ten varieties but these are definitely the most popular of the three and this one is called chili chili and it's got the different color uh, you know, little peppers on there, and that'll last deep into the freeze. It may dry up a little bit, but that color is going to last pretty mm -hmm. much from July on. And this other one is called Purple Splash, or yeah, Purple Splash, and it's one of my favorite because it really has all different shades of purple. The the mm -hmm. uh, peppers aren't aren't that pretty to me to me, but the colors of purple and green are outstanding. And this last one's called Black Pearl, and it's pretty obvious why they call it Black Pearl, because all the peppers look like black pearls. And it gets quite a bit larger. It can get almost two feet tall. But they're really nice. They look good all summer, but then they even thrive in the fall. So it's something you can plan ahead and prepare, and they'll take a little cooler weather. And they really do make it through the summer just fine, too. So if, you don't wanna, if you're going to eat them, you're in trouble. But if you want to enjoy <laughs> their beauty, it's a perfect plant for an ornamental garden. Those oh, are yeah. really outstanding. Oh, the Very great good. thing about foliage color is... It doesn't have to bloom have in to order to look blooms, fantastic. Yeah. That's right. I've used these, this, this tall one. The color is just fantastic. Really, really stunning. Very mm. eye-catching. I have it next to black and blue salvia. Yeah. Ooh, oh, this yeah. would pick that black up perfectly. Black and blue salvia. That would be wonderful. Really nice. That is nice. Very good. Well, thank you all for the great show and tells. You can tell we're all revved up. <laughs> well, now we're going to have <laughs> another be. sort of a show and tell. We're going to go to our <laughs> video mail, and it's a tree and something about a tree. I have a question about this tree. This is the leaf. It's a rather tall tree. And it seems like during the night, this cotton ball-like substance falls to the ground. But there's no substance in the tree as I look at the tree. Where does that cotton ball stuff come from? Okay, so first off, we're going to identify the tree, and we decided as a group that it is cottonwood. cottonwood. Okay, now let's answer the question, why do you not see it on the tree? Well, Shane had the best Yeah, Shane, we're going to let you. Oh, I, I, use this, I brought out this big word. It's tight. <laughs> when it's on the tree, it's small, so you don't yeah. see it. it it's kind of like a dandelion when it's all together. You don't realize how many thousands or tens of thousands, so... As soon as it comes off the tree, then it opens up because it wants to fly all over the place and reproduce. And so that's why you're seeing it. You're not seeing it when it's little, and you are seeing it when it's all fluffed out. What's surprising is you're not seeing it in the air, that it floats right now. Because, you know, at our house, we'll see it yeah. floating by. A lot. Yeah. First and second story <laughs> height. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's interesting that it just drops straight down. 
Yeah, the quarry where we used to swim growing up had cottonwoods around it, and when they were when they were dropping cotton, it, it would just wash up on shore all mm -hmm. around the, all mm -hmm. around the quarry. Hence so, the name, cottonwood. Yeah. So that tree is smaller, mm -hmm. and that's probably going to happen. It's doing it less now, but mm -hmm. but that's a very good question, and that is a cottonwood, and it's the technical fuzz. Yeah. yeah, cottonwood fuzz. Nobody's sneaking in and littering with. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> well, if you have a question and you want to send a video in, well, here is the address for you to do the same thing. It could be an identification, or it could be a tree problem, or um, a landscape issue. So um, send us your video if you would like to. Okay. Well, now we're going to go to the phone lines, and let's start first with line two, and it's about a dogwood. Hi there. Hi there. I have a dog. Line two. Are you there? I have Are a dogwood there? tree. It looks well, healthy. Hello? I don't hear anyone. So shall we there? go to the next one? Let's go to hello? line three. And it's another tree question. Hello. Uh-oh. Hello. Okay. Yes, uh, I've Anybody? got a Norway maple uh, in my yes. backyard. Okay, line and three. Hi. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. I sure can. Okay. I've got a Norway maple in my backyard, mm -hmm. and uh, every year it gets little, you know, uh, whirligig seeds on it. Mm -hmm. But this year they have never dropped. Every one of them is still on her, and I've seen two or three trees in other parts of the area like that. And I just wondered, I've never seen it happen before. They've always lost them, you know, and they're all over the place, but they've stayed right on the tree this year. They've not dropped the first one. They will. I was wondering if you'd heard anything like that. Well, Norway maple normally hangs on to them a lot longer than like silver maple and, and red, red maples, maples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and sugars. And sh well, sh sugars stay sugar pretty much through the season. Yeah, too. that's yeah. true. So sugars and maple, uh, and Norway, Norway maples are very much tend alive. Tend to hang on to them until later on. So I don't know why they were falling off for you earlier before, but this is more normal for them to be on through the summer and then and then and then do their pinwheel act in the fall. Yep. So you'll have several <laughs> early, but you'll have the two that the leaves look the most alike. Sugars in Norway's yeah. will hold. And I don't think it's an indication of anything wrong with your tree. You don't have to worry no. about that. It's just it may have been an indication of drought last year that they dropped them early. That's, that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. It, so everything it was <coughs> kind of just shut down Last mode. year was the fluke. Oh, brother. Okay, well, that's a good observation, and thank you for your question. Well, let's go to line four next, and this is about a Rose of Sharon. Hi, line four. Hello. Um, and what's your okay, question? Um, can you hear me now? No. Hello? I can barely hear a little voice, and I can't. Can someone chat with us? Someone was talking on hey, the Hey, let me try. Time. Okay. Can you hear me well, now? Well, do we go to line five? Uh, She's saying something. Yeah, it's I just can like hear her. Can you? But real faintly. I can understand her. <coughs> huh. Shall we Sorry, try another line? Sorry, a little technical difficulty here. Hmm. Well, let's go to line five. Shall we try that one? We do have lots of show and tell, but we would like to chat with someone. Okay. Okay. Well, we will Ooh. have to, we're gonna try to work on that, but in the meantime, wow. Well, let's, let's do go to a, the did you know. Stay tuned and we'll go to a little did you know fact. <laughs> That was an excellent did you know. Do you know anything about that one, Chuck? Well, yes. Um, <coughs> it's getting a little late to start Brussels sprouts now. Uh, broccoli, mm, cauliflower maybe. Uh, I started mine, uh, I started my, my Brussels sprouts almost a month ago and broccoli and, and, and cauliflower probably three weeks ago. So but if they found it at a... If you can find plants somewhere, which seems to be almost impossible, um, that would yeah. be good. Okay. Now would be the time to get them transplanted. And the way this summer is acting, uh, they're probably going to hold up pretty well. Mm -hmm. And as they mature in the, in the cooler weather of fall, they, they, oh, it's they, they just oh, get fantastic. Delicious. So good. Yeah. And, so much and Brussels better. sprouts, <laughs> if they can hang there until they actually freeze on the plant, oh, yeah. it really kind of gets some of the, if you don't, if you don't like the bitterness of, of Brussels sprouts, that really kind of cures it. it well, does. And for my they're broccoli, so I just and keep cheese. them. I keep the broccoli <laughs> cut back. 
And so a lot, if you can get your broccoli to stay through the summer, a lot of people tear them out, but just cut them back. Yeah. And then when they come on. Yeah, my spring broccoli is still, is still doing fine. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's been so this cool. This year's a good one for it. Well, say, do you have any more to show us? Oh, I'm, so, I'm so tickled that I get to talk <laughs> about them all. Uh, you, you may know cucumbers, uh, and this is, you know, sort of a generic dark green cucumber. This one's a little young, so it's not fully dark green, but, you know, that's, that's what you would recognize as, as a cucumber. Uh, well, I've got a couple of white ones. This one's one called White Wonder. It's sort of short and blocky, and this one's one called Pearl. It's, it's a little bit more the shape of that one, more like we, we think of as a, as a slicing cucumber. And then this one is one called Artist, and it's really, really interesting. It's, it's got lots and lots of, of, of little, not very sharp spines on it, but the, the skin on this one is, is incredibly tender, and so it, uh, it might be one where you can eat, eat the skin and all. And then, and then. okra. You know, and you think of okra as being green pods or maybe sort of a silvery pod like this, but then you get the, the burgundy pods. Uh, this is an orange one. Uh, it's it's an that. heirloom that I got from Baker Creek Seeds this year. And this one is, is like a, a Star of David type, which if you do cross sections of this, they may sort of have a six pointed star. Mine last year all had seven, but uh, that's Why don't you hold them there. all up together? <laughs> Not too really, high. Really pretty. That they one really is so are. huge. It's really. It is huge, and, and that's, that's past where you can eat it. And that's the other thing I wanted to say is if you're picking them and you're not sure if, if they're still going to be tender and edible, you can just take the very tip and bend it. If it bends like that, it's, it's fibrous. Uh, you know, it's good as an, you know, let them dry out, and you can, you can gild them and use them in dried arrangements. <clears throat> but younger ones, that one's also too far. Here we go. <laughs> It, snap. It, it should snap right off. There it is. That one is, is, is pretty good. Usually three or four inches is what we say, uh, but the, the, the burgundy and, and this orange one seem to hang on to tenderness a little bit longer. But even that really thick one, the really, it's, is it I think just it's pretty fibrous. That's been on there a long time. Is it? But it's always that big. That's really a huge one. Well, I mean, why? They're, they're short and fat. And, and again, their... you would probably, because they're short, you would probably want to get that one at two to three inches. Okay. But uh, that's probably the only really edible one. And then that we if have they get here. too far along, you just use them for drieds. Right, but the thing is, if you let too many of them mature on the plant, then they sap all the energy they and they stop mm -hmm. putting on new ones. Maybe. So, so if if you don't have a, a a need for seed, if you're saving an heirloom or decorations, it's better to cut them off and just just compost them or do something else with them, so that you keep Good getting point. new flowers. And and if you're not familiar with with okra, it has Beautiful flowers, uh, mm -hmm. like a Rosa Sharon or a hollyhock, it's they in are. that plant family. Uh, so it's 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 another thing that's incredibly ornamental. Do the red ones hold their color as you dry them? Uh, no, they go to brown. Do they go to brown? It Let's may see. be a sort of a darker a darker brown than the mm -hmm. than the standard, but They're beautiful they color. all kind of go to that. Well, I plant yes. them in the center of a wide row, so I have a purple basil on either side. And it's Very really pretty. pretty. I'll bet. It's really pretty. Bet. Sometimes I forget I'm supposed to pick them because they're just so pretty. <laughs> and ideally, but I did you, pick you, one yesterday. Ideally, you would pick them every every two days at the, yes. at, the at the longest, and uh, that that can get a little old. But um, but they're tasty. Uh, some people hate them, but they're, I think well, they're tasty. I, <laughs> some people hate them and have never tried them because that's because they've heard the word slimy and that yeah. that's that's it. Not fried though. Uh, yeah, and fried they're not slimy. <laughs> not at all. Um, I mean, you can decide and how slimy soups, you make. They're them. not slimy. I mean, well, they, they kind of thicken the soup. But you don't know they're slimy. So. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we've defended okra enough. Yeah, Welcome to an okra evening. <laughs> it is okra anonymous <laughs> evening. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go then okra. to yours, Marty. <laughs> yes. Uh, we had a we had a question. Uh, a viewer wrote in. I have an old rose bush, the kind my mom would say had gone wild. It's blooming, but it has only shoots nine feet tall. I want to trim them off, and my friend said you can't trim rose bushes in June. Do I have to wait? It's getting out of hand. I'm sorry. We got to this a little bit late in the season, but prune away, prune, prune. You can prune in June all you would like. Um, if if it's not a climbing rose and those shoots are that tall. If it's not typically that size, I'm thinking you might have some shoots coming off from the root stock, and that's really 
not exactly what you wanted anyway. <laughs> so um, you might consider that possibility. If it's not right out of the stem and it's around the ground, around it might might not be exactly. If it doesn't, especially if it blooms and it doesn't look like the flower you planted, you might want to think about getting another one. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much. And now oh, oh, I'm yeah. seeing a plant next to me, so I have a feeling <laughs> it all might right. be something we're going to check out. Oh, so look at me pretty. getting all caught up in the. This is. Uh, this is one of my favorite plants. It's in the. It's a coreopsis, and, and everybody has probably knows coreopsis. At least seen the yellow. You see moonbeam or zagreb growing mm -hmm. everywhere, but they they've been trying for years to get to a red color because there are annual coreopsis, and you kind of have to be careful what garden center you go to because sometimes they're not real open and up front, whether it's an annual or perennial. And the annual ones, or they call them tender perennials, which means annual mm -hmm. in, in certain parts of the Midwest, die. Um, will die. <laughs> yeah. So it, I'm not saying it's still not worth buying that, but you have to be a little careful. But what they're really breeding are some of these new crosses that are hardy. And this is one that's been fantastic. And it's called Route 66. And Cue the music, <laughs> but, but it's uh, it, 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 it starts Don't out yellow. Us. So as soon as it comes out, you may think, "Oh, I just bought a yellow one." But as the season progresses, yeah, it, the yeah. older cultivars used to turn red as it turned cooler. But this one seems to start really early, as soon as June, and you can see July, and now we're in August. It's got a lot of red, and it. it's just outstanding. You, as a garden center owner, you can just put this out front and it's free sale. They just, oh, yeah. Yeah. they flock to it. And it does come back every year. It's really easy to grow. Our production manager loves it because it presents a really nice pot and in the garden. So it's, it's definitely something you want to add to your garden. If you want something easy to grow, something flowers all summer and has a different look to I it. I just love the foliage on it. It's I love just, threadleaf yeah. types. I love the really threadleaf nice. types. And it'd be yeah. great in containers with It'd be oh, great yeah. with hen and chickens. Look at it, that. It'll, it'll, it'll hang with an annual, the whole, mm -hmm. just, you know, because it has oh, such yeah. nice flowers to it. Looks good with the cauliflower. Yeah. This one will probably make it next to my <laughs> mailbox. I see. Very good. <laughs> okra. It's a killer with okra. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. And now we're going to try a kind. phone line. Yeah. And if we don't get that, then we have other things to do. So let's go to line six. And it's a question about tomatoes. Hi there. Hello. Well, hi Yay, there. What is your question? Uh, you're having trouble with your phone lines, I understand. Yes, but we hear you, so all is good. Okay. Um, I have never planted tomatoes in my life, and I'm over 80 years old, so I planted two this year south of my deck. Uh, we had a strong wind come through and knock the heck out of them, so I tried to put it back up, and my son got them back up. Yes. But I have such tiny little green tomatoes. Are they going to turn ripe, or is it going to be too late, and do I have to eat fried green tomatoes? <laughs> oh, you oh, got time. We've, yeah, we've still got a lot of time for oh, tomatoes yeah. to ripen, so I, I wouldn't worry about them. I wouldn't worry about them yet. Um, you know, as you get toward you know late September and we start thinking about maybe a frost, that's when you want to want to salvage the last green tomatoes and, and, and have fried green tomatoes. But uh, because we've had cool spells and, and, and we didn't get tomatoes out as early as we do sometimes. Uh, mine are just now. The fr I just picked the first ripening ones uh, last weekend. So uh, I think a little patience, and they should be okay. And and you've got September got and parts of October. Oh yeah, usually just depending. Depending. The way the right. cold fronts have been coming down, you never know. But yeah, it may yeah. freeze in August <coughs> this year. When they have no, a, a frost warning, <laughs> don't, don't panic. Though. When they have a frost warning, I usually cover mine with a sheet or a tarp, and you know, it's a little cold snap, and then it gets warm again, and you got tomatoes till Halloween. So, well, a lot of people have been having trouble with blossom end rot, the yeah. black. I mean, really? people talking about it, but oh, yeah. I think it's just because the, it was really wet. The they didn't mulch, yeah. then it got dry, and then they water them too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just try to keep even moisture. That's what it yeah, seems. I would have thought that was much worse last summer than it, it is was this summer. Much worse, but a lot of people still. On mine, I haven't still. seen that at all. I've seen bacterial spot a oh, lot. On the I, leaves. Mm -hmm. On the fruit. On the fruit. <coughs> and um, and for that, you do what? I don't know if, what a homeowner can do. Co commercial growers can, can do like copper So don't mention it. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, mostly I, I picking it off. Bacterial diseases are really hard for a homeowner. So cleanliness mainly. I guess. Yeah, and, and yeah. Yeah. if you have it, clean them up and get them out of the garden so it doesn't overwinter on the debris. Okay. 
All right, very good. Well, we want to go to the little quiz next. Don't go away. Uh, that's what I guessed. I mean, not that I knew it. <laughs> that's what I guess. But the one that stands head and shoulders above would be a ripe red, red bell pepper. pepper. You bet. Ripe <coughs> red bell pepper. There Indeed. you go. This has been a great show about vegetables <coughs> and, yeah. and flowers too, but good, good vegetable ones. Well, thank you so much for walk <laughs> watching us. We really enjoyed bringing all this energy to you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>